So let me ask, this war going on in Israel right now, in Palestine, um, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the war? And uh, because of time, give me a short answer. How do you feel about the war between Israel and Palestine right now? How do I feel about the war between Israel and Palestine? Right. I feel it's a huge war of misinformation. It's the largest slaughter of Jews on record since the Holocaust, which my family survived. So that means it's the current generation's Holocaust for Jews. Um, during that slaughter, there were black people killed. There were Arab people killed, Palestinians by Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. And Israel has retaliated with proportionate force. I think now we are in a war of information and media, which benefits off all the attention on Jews and Palestinians in the area. And the people that suffer are the innocent civilians. Do and you sadly, feel bad for the Jewish innocent civilian who have suffered and have suffered for this? Yeah, 100%. I feel bad for all innocent civilians, but I'm Jewish and I'm Israeli, so I'm obviously leaning with my, my people, you know, and I think that's okay to stand with your people and take care of them. And I'm also very sad that a lot of innocent people die on the, on the hands of Hamas. Do you feel bad for the Palestinian innocent people that were killed? Yes, because I believe that one, innocent civilians shouldn't die in war. And this is for every war on record in the entire history, yeah. there will be innocent civilians that die, but also they're used as pawns by their own people for political gain and money. So the people want them almost to die so they could earn more money. Um, and that's how Hamas kind of makes a business. They get more aid money. Um, their leaders live in Qatar and they make billions of dollars, yet they can't um, build their own bomb shelters. They can't, they, they don't do that for their people. Um, um, it's been reported that the, pilot, the Hamas people, they surprised the Israeli people when they stormed them that day. Is that true? And why didn't Israel know that these people were coming beforehand? Um, it's a great question that a lot of us are answering, um, but it's something that I couldn't even tell you because oh, okay. you think, what would be the chances that 50 years earlier on Yom Kippur War was the same thing, but there was some, uh, if, you, if you do some history on it, that were people that, that were able to notify um, the Israelis. This was a slaughter, and so many people were wondering, where is, where, is, uh, where is the army? Where are they protecting? How did they get in here? And sadly, um, you know, we had to, res it, it was, it, it's impossible to fathom how it could happen, while at the same time you're mourning for what has happened. Well, at the same time, you have to respond to what happened. Yeah. And how do you feel? A lot of people are blaming Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, for that. Do you blame him, or how do you see him now? First, if anyone knows about the history of, of the current like political crisis in Israel, is that they can't put forth a leader. And once this leader won from the right-wing government, it means a parliament-run style government. So... Even the people that win, they're not necessarily the majority. The, the sad thing about death with Jews and in Israel is that the country is now more united than ever, right? I mean, it's like, I think they just did a, a, um, a poll and 80% of the country believes they'll win the war, that they're united, right? And these are people that were out protesting for the entire year, every week on end by the thousands against Netanyahu and the right-wing government. I remember that. And now... People want him out because you represent the largest death in the entire history of Jews since since the Holocaust. You're going to align Netanyahu with everything, but Netanyahu, he's he's lost and he's come back to win. And and at this point, people don't want him. But right now, that's not the question at hand. The question at hand is how do we get the hostages back? That's the most important thing. It really doesn't matter who the leader is. But right now, there is a leadership with him and Benny Gantz. So Netanyahu remind me of the Great White Hope. You know who the Great White Hope is, right? I do. I know he's your favorite guy. <laughs> Donald Trump. But Netanyahu Trump. reminds me of him, and he seemed to be the right man in the right place at the right time. I don't think if they had any other leader in Israel right now, they would be able to defeat this. They would never come back again. Am I wrong? Uh, 
Are you talking about Donald Trump? You're talking about Netanyahu. Netanyahu. Um, at this point, I'm really interested to see what happens moving forward. But I think uh, it, it, I would be obviously curious of what it would look like if it was Netanyahu and Trump versus Netanyahu with Joe Biden. Um, yeah. Because I really. It would be the dream team. I, sadly, sadly, you know, um, people are wondering, you know, how long will it take to get the hostages? And I have friends that have, I have my own followers that survived the music festival that messaged me. And then if you guys are interested to see the things that they said to me while surviving, um, I've had friends that have uh, family members that are kidnapped. Um, so it's a very close to home. Everyone who's Jewish and has been Israeli or lived in Israel knows somebody that has been um, killed know somebody that has been kidnapped or know somebody that's fighting on the front line. It's it, every, it's a very small country. Proportionately, if you think about it, it, it would be 35,000 New Yorkers plus that would have died. That's in, in the scale of the population of Israel. Your family I'm, member well, made it all right. Nobody was hurried or kidnapped or anything. Your family, right? No one in my immediate family, oh, no. God. Nice. Um, um, but I do know that it's going to be long drawn out. And like I said, it's a war of the media and Benjamin Netanyahu or Donald Trump or anyone cannot control that. And that's that's something that people are doing on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. And that's really what the, the war has become. Amazing. Um, the anti-Semitism, you'll see after this war is over, you'll you'll look at the news and say, wow, there's so many more attacks on Jews all around the world. And so it's not just this war, even if the hostages get home. And that's the problem that we have to deal with. Um, I, I, are you liberal Jew or conservative? Um, I'll, I'll tell you this. I feel I stand in the middle. I have a lot of liberal values, just the things I care about. But the liberal community of, of America and of the whole world is extremely blinded and doesn't understand it's the first community to ever ask people, prove to us that you're not lying and this is what that 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 women were raped and pillaged and shot in their head like by, like they were done by Nazis. And only people that have to do that in the world today are Jews and no one would even believe us. And it's documented on Instagram live and Facebook. People are texting um people are texting family members pictures of them with their phones. And people are still saying proven, and it's not conservatives that are saying it. Maybe very right wing people, but mostly it's in the liberal community, and people are saying, "I don't believe it. Israel's a liar." So, so, so you're not. I, I probably won't be liberal for long, <laughs> but I'm just saying I've always been in the middle because I'm very, as a Jew, you're very aware that the radical left is extremely radical, yeah. and then there's a radical right, and they all meet in a horse. It's called the horseshoe theory. So they're here, here, and they go, they meet, you know. I never understood, and I, I never understood, I have a lot of Jewish friends, but I never understood how could a Jew be a liberal? It doesn't make sense. And they say they went through a lot already, uh, through the Holoc Holocaust and all that kind of stuff. How can you go through trauma like that and still be a liberal? That doesn't make sense to me. In the same way, I don't know how blacks can be liberal and they always whining and complain about slavery, Jim Crow. Every time you see them, they're bitching, right? But yet they say they're liberal. They support the Democrat. How can they be if they, if they say they've been punished the way they say they've been punished? How can you be a liberal after that? Well, I'll tell you this. In New York right now, two of the strongest leaders and supporters of Israel are Democrats, um, Eric Adams and Richie Torres. Mayor, and, Adam, the mayor? Yeah, and he was that a former... That man, don't police, trust him. He's a former police officer. Uh, and that, man is, is a, that man is a quote-unquote racist. He's hate white people, in my opinion. But he's been marching with Jews all over, and he's been a really great defender. That's and why he, I hear... I, if I were you guys, I'd turn around <laughs> and go the other way. I don't really trust politicians, but I do appreciate people that are allies that, that check in on... on um, the, on check in on, on on Jews, especially during the worst time. Um, I want to say that you know I'm, I'm not I'm not like right now. I'm not worried about what I am. I just know that my people are hurting. I want to show up for my people, and I think that's what real men do. And long story short, though, but how can uh, Jewish people be liberal 
and gone through the trauma they said they have gone through, how can they still be a liberal rather than conservative? There's a concept in, 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 in the Jewish world called Tikkun Olam, which is Heal the World. And you know Michael Jackson had that song, Heal we the World. We are the world. Yeah, make it a we better place. We are the people. <laughs> and we are the ones. I'll tell you what, yeah, my father doesn't even be like that. I come from a family full of <laughs> conservatives, I'm sure. But my, uh, you know, just a value, you know, Jews march with blacks for civil rights, Rabbi Heschel, Martin Luther King. Um, people believe in all these rights. They, the Jews are the first ones to march when Muslims got banned from the seven countries. Jews were the first ones there. And there are Jews marching with Palestine too. But, you know, after, but knowing who I am and where my family comes from and my history of, of being Jewish and knowing, knowing like where Jews come from, I just feel like I'm aligned with whoever is the best for my people right now to make the best decisions. And that's how I feel. I'm so, not really concerned with liberal, conservative. So I'm do just, you support the great white hope? If Donald Trump. Was, no, I don't think, I, but that's because I don't think, no? I don't think he's the best one for Israel anymore. In fact, some of the stuff he said was really not, not great. I know he's your fan. I know that makes you sad, but, um, but, but why I, did I you change your mind? Thing. Just because you disagree with one or two things he said. He's still Donald Trump. Why would you change your mind on a few things that he said? Yeah, I, I he said some, doesn't say the best things during, during uh, like responding to what happened in Israel. But and that I don't know, make is, you he change for, is he gonna run for president again? Him? Is he gonna run for president again? Uh, who, Donald Trump? Yeah. He's already running, what do you mean? Is he gonna run? He's running, oh he is running? I wasn't totally been? sure. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if he was in court or going to jail. If Donald Trump went to jail, you can't visit keep him? a good man down. What the? If he went to jail, would you visit him? Now I would visit. I would vote for him, and I would go to jail and take him breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Okay. I pick cotton for him. That's. Hey, listen. <laughs> do what you do. What you gotta do, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So That's let me cool. ask, um, what's wrong? Oh, let me ask this. Then I, I, I so much I want to ask you, but yeah, ask me. At one time, blacks liked the Jews; they didn't hate them. Now the blacks hate the Jews. How does how do how does how do the Jewish people feel knowing that, as you said, they they marched with the blacks during Martin Luther King time? And now the blacks have turned on them. How do the Jews feel about that, knowing that the blacks hate them? I think that's a great question. And I think what you're referring to is Black Lives Matter, the organization. I'm talking about all of the blacks for the most part. I don't think that's the true. Christian blacks, it's a the Christian blacks, the Black Lives Matter I don't think people. you hate Jewish people, do you? No, I love the Jews. There you go. I so grew that's up one. because I, I see the spiritual connection between Judaism and Christianity. If there was mm -hmm. no Judaism, there would be no Christianity. So yeah, we're all tied together. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Um, and I think the world needs to operate that way. I don't think I don't believe in that. I don't believe that's not true because I, all the black people that I meet, um, most of them love me, especially because of how I participate and respect black culture. Because I'm a hip hop artist and I do comedy and. This is a highly generated, you I know, from popularity you, from Wild and Out with Nick. So, I can tell you how to prove that they don't love you. Okay, go for it. I don't know if you should do it because if you do, they're gonna throw you out of the black club. But uh, <laughs> they're not gonna throw me out. I don't think the so. next time you see a black, disagree with them about racism because there's no such thing as racism. It has never existed. It's a made-up lie. And yet the blacks, and not all, not all, not all, not all, but most, they love to believe and cry racism, but racism doesn't exist. So if you want to see if they love you or not, well, let me ask tell you a them question. That, bla that racism doesn't exist and see what happens. I, I wouldn't do that because I, I don't do. I not blame you. I wouldn't either. But do you believe anti-Semitism exists? No, I don't. You don't believe in bigotry of any kind? No. It doesn't make any sense. Why not? Why do you think six million Jews were killed? Do you think they were killed for what? They were the cause of all well, the. That's you don't have to say it exists, but they were 
the the cause of the problem. So because people, of human being, the hatred of the heart, it's a spiritual battle. And unless you've been born again of God, your heart is wicked. And in that wicked nature, you are taken out of other people. It's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. So anyone that has anger will destroy you. I don't care if it's your daddy, your mama, your brother, your sister, your friend. You can friend. call it whatever you want, but people definitely hate the Jews right now. But, <laughs> that's my that's experience. what I'm saying. It's hatred. It's not isms. It's either good or hate. And most human beings' hearts are evil. And as God, as Christ said, an angry man is a murderer. And so they did it out of hatred. And if we face the reality of what it really is, instead of putting QC names on it and see that. Right, so you believe that hatred evil, exists, but the isms don't. Right. Hatred exists, but not the isms. Well, people definitely hate others for yes. being different. Yeah. And that's because of whatever they want to blame and not taking responsibility for their own faults. Well, they don't hate them because they're different. They hate them because their hearts are wicked. And so they have the nature, you ever hear the, the, they have the, the nature of evil. They and so hate us. What? They hate us because they ain't us. Have you ever heard that expression? Yeah, but that's not a true statement. They hate us because they ain't us. That's not a true statement. They hate you because their nature is It's a is saying. Up. I don't know whether you want to say it, but it is a saying. Right. It has a but I'm sick of all these sayings because they are covered up evil. Human beings must be born again of God, and their heart will change, and then there will That's be no more wars. I believe that, and I'll just tell you this honestly. In my life, I believe that anti-Jewish hatred exists, and they figure out how to do it. I think people hate those that are different from other All people colors. do. Not different from other. They just have hatred in their heart. But because if you didn't have anger in your heart, you could not hate anyone. No matter what they did, it would be on them. And I try not to. I focus on me showing love versus worrying about everyone who hates everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And I, honestly, it's an amazing power if you're you, – and, and, and I know most people are watching this at some point – I've hated somebody. Everybody has. Yeah. So and everything, show all this and stuff is happening. People. All this stuff is happening. It is happening with all races of people. It's happening in all families. It's happening in relationships and everything because it's evil. And evil people cannot get along because there is no love. Everything is happening to everybody until their hearts change from anger to love. I'd say that at least in Israel, what's happening now, the kindest people that I've had interactions with, with Israel versus Palestine for the past 17 days, have been actual Palestinians. So my suggestion, the most people that are showing hatred aren't either of that kind. They feel like they're left out, like they have survivor's guilt, and they're coming in with their opinions and this and that, and they're bringing all their life trauma into people that actually have the trauma. They blame and they're, yeah piling on to us yeah so if by my suggestion is if you're if you don't have a part of uh if you see two people on the street they're fighting why would you go in there and start and and join the fight and there was one on one and then now it's it's 20 on 87 and yeah, it's don't and now take it's, a side let the, the two people fight and the fight is on between those two and no one else but yeah. but people with anger in their heart they take a side and they'll divide, and they'll start fighting one another as well. Well, that's what, that's originally the problem of the of Israel and, and, and the Palestinians is the plight of, of other people pretending like they care, which they really don't. And that's how the blacks are. The blacks don't care about anybody. They don't love one another. That's why they kill one another, rape one another, uh, jealous and envious, because they have no love, and they got to overcome their mama. They, must, they don't realize the anger they have is that of their mothers because... I don't believe that. I do not believe that, but I do understand. You could have a different perspective. You could, I um, bank, you could bank on it. They hate their I'm mothers. Saying, why, why do you think they act like women if they don't hate their mothers? I want to share this story for people that might not know it. There's recently in the news it came out that um, uh, one of the Hamas terrorists uh, called his father from his phone from one of the people that he killed his phone and he called up his father, Abu, I, I killed 10 people, I killed 10 people and asked him if he was proud of him, which just shows you 
that what your whole theme is about of how people grow up in the household is really what sets the tone for people the rest of their life. And you yes. can't really make peace with a society that raises people to hate others. 